Why, hello there, my friend. I'm glad to see you made it. For we are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. You know, in a lot of my videos that I make, they're mostly Bible study videos, a, a way to draw out from the Bible some teachings and instructions that we can use for our everyday life. And so, in today's video, throughout this message, I, I want to speak of, you know, a little bit of Jeremiah 16 and 17, and chapters 29 of Jeremiah, you know, that most famous quoted scriptures of Jeremiah, right? And, uh, and then I want to tie that into First Peter and, and the letter that Peter wrote to, to, there to the Jewish people or to those who are scattered, right, throughout uh, uh, all these different places, to the exiles. And, and I want to show you and get you to see that, that nothing, <clears throat> nothing the disciples or the apostles taught in the New Testament uh, contradicted anything that's being taught in the Old Testament. You know, let's go, uh, let's go back four or five years ago. Let, let's go back to 2011. 2011. And, and we see here Jeremiah, he's talking, he's talking to a people who are about to be taken away from their country, taken away from the comforts of their home, taken away from everything they knew had that, that had been truth, right? <clears throat> and, and they're going to be thrown and thrust in, into Babylon, in, into a place unknown, a place, you know, Babylon's confusion, a place of confusion, a place where, where it has a ruler outside uh, of what the teachings and instructions of God has instructed his people to be ruled by. Right? We got Nebuchadnezzar and that Babylonian Empire, and, and their will and their wish and their want is to dominate the entire earth and world. <coughs> In that land, they worship foreign gods and foreign gods that are known to the Jewish people or, or the Israelite people. Not Jews alone are, are not Israelites, but, but the Israelites are, are an entire nation of people made up of many tribes. And, and in that, you know, these tribes, these people have all been sent and are going to be sent into exile here in, in Jeremiah's time. And so we come here in our world, 2011, right? And in the 1940s or whatnot, Israel has made a new nation, and for 2,000 years, there, there was no nation of Israel. And all of a sudden, after World War II, there's a nation of Israel. Here we are, 70, almost 70 years later, right? And, and, and Jesus says at the end of the 70-year period for Babylon, that, that God would return that the Lord would return, and it would be at that point when he would return to the people, right? And the reason the people were being sent or thrown to Babylon was they didn't believe God, weren't believing in God, weren't believing and entrusting in God's teachings and in instructions, in his word, didn't believe or trust in God's steadfast love, his mercies and his goodness. And so they went off and, and they were worshiping foreign gods, foreign things. If the Word of God, Jesus Christ is the Word of God in flesh, if the Word of God is our Master, our Lord, the devil cannot confess Jesus is both Lord and Savior. We, did, we get disobedient. You know, there's a time for thousands of years where, where the church of Jesus Christ began to grow. And it was growing and growing and growing. And, and all of a sudden, you know, if you live in the United States of America like I do, there, there's a church of every denomination, a church on every single corner of, of everybody's hometown. All across the United States. And then you, you come to today and all of a sudden you go to church and all those buildings all across the United States are basically empty. At one time, I remember back in the 70s and the 80s, when I was a little boy, and we'd go to church. This is the church called St. James, a Presbyterian church. And we'd go to that church, and it was full. 
three services every Sunday. It was so full that they had to have three sermons or services every Sunday. And today, they barely have enough people to, to attend one. There's plenty of empty seats. And it's not just that church. Many churches all across the nation, same thing. It almost feels as though there's a falling away. A falling away. And I tell you, I believe we're not in a place of falling away. We're in a place of transformation. A place of being transformed into a new body, into a new church. The church is not being weakened. The church is not being broken. But it's being transformed into a different style of church. A different way. And although the message isn't taken away, the way to eternal life hasn't been removed. But the way it's being spread, the way it's being worshipped, is being changed. So when we talk about Jesus, you know, many of the Bibles may say the end of the world, he will return, or, or at the end of the age. At the end of the age. And, and when he returns at the end of the age, it's to start a new age. Go back 2,000 years ago, Jesus' time, and, and the age they lived in. You got the Roman Empire, right, ruling over the world. And we got uh, all different kinds of ways of life. You have Viking people, and you've got, you know, the, the beginnings of the English and the French. And, and violence was prevalent all across the land in those times and those places. Torture and the torture of human beings was an accepted practice. You know, the state, the government, uh, uh, funded crucifixions, funded it, paid for it. You know, like, like in, in the United States of America, there was a, a long time where the United States of America funded and paid for the hanging of men. You know, you broke the law or, or you did something outside of what we agreed as being righteous or moral, we, we'd hang you from a tree. And then we said, no, nah, no more hanging people from trees. No more crucifying people. We'll, we'll electrocute them. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we got the electric chair. And then that's been removed. And we have another humane way of just injecting somebody with so much poison that they basically die instantly of a heart attack, whatever, whatever it is. The world is being transformed. You go back 70 years. Okay, let's go back. The last hundred years, Jesus says, the last age, the last people, <coughs> will be a people in an age like no other. Never equaled to that in the world. And we see today, not equaled. There's not, not our grandparents, or great-grandparents, seeing the world we see today with the social media, the ability to connect with one another through spirit, not just by flesh, but through spirit. And be able to gather together safely in a place where we can talk and converse and create relationships with one another. And come to find out, hey, you know, we all are living in the same world, suffering from the very same problem. And all the world, and Christians or non-Christians, believers or non-believers, whatever religion you worship or God you worship, we all have one problem. The same problem. And it all comes through our unbelief in the willingness to love another person as being uh, the, the catalyst or the vault or the cannon which shoots us up to a place of glory. All the kingdom. We're always so focused on ourselves. I mean, a lot of times we, we come to God and we're bringing burdens, right? And God says, don't bring me your burdens. In other words, don't bring me your bills, your problems, and your worries. Because God is in control of all the bills, the problems, and the worries. Rather, bring to me thank offerings. Right? Bring to me faith. Faith. And in that, you know, the, the unbelievers are praying for you know, financial gain. They're praying for better homes. They're praying for God to protect their homes. They're, they're praying for all kinds of, 
of things, things, and yet neglecting the presence of God, who, who later, you know, in the end, provides all, all the things. So they bring burdens to God instead of thankfulness. And then that, you know, some of the burdens we bring is, boy, it's a real burden in my life when, when these unbelievers treat me in a way that they know. And they don't know the way of God, so they treat people and live their lives in a way that, that they know. And what they know is what they've been taught. Right? And what they were taught was lies and, and deception. Right? Because God's steadfast love is, is here for us today. It's here for all of us. Has not been removed just because... God says, I'm going to put you in a place of exile and, and scatter you throughout uh, Babylon. Doesn't mean he's come to destroy you. He's come to change your ways, come to transform your life. If we go back to 2011, how many of us were going to church? How many of us are willingly, freely, willingly giving to, to God? The things that God wishes for. Prayers. First fruits. Waking up first thing in the morning and giving your day to God. If we're living in a state of disobedience or rebellion to God, it's very hard to pray. And if we're not praying, it's a lack of trust. And it's not that we're praying for things. We're praying for God's presence. We're praying for, for a touch, a feel, a voice an ear, and God's involvement in our lives. Sometimes we feel, or maybe we felt clear back 2011, 2012, God had forsaken us, God had abandoned us. But maybe it was us who abandoned God, and it was us who abandoned His teachings, and we abandoned our faith. And in that like we see with Jeremiah, as the people begin to blame. We can do two one or two things. We can blame everybody else for the problems we're having. Or, or we could just go into Babylon and, and become just like the Babylonians. Be assimilated into their life. Or we could do like Daniel and, and resolve in our hearts that, that, that no matter where I am, I will worship God in truth. And no matter where I am, I will hold myself to the standard which God has given me. So in chapters 29 of Jeremiah, he's wrote a letter to the exiles. And so who are the exiles that were in Babylon? Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, and many others. But, but he's writing a letter to them, and he's saying to them, right, Prosper with the Babylonians, right? Marry and have children and, and these things. And, and Jeremiah says, listen to the Lord. The Lord your God wishes to prosper you. Lord of God has, or the Lord our God has a plan for you. And it isn't to be assembled in, into this place, but, but it is for them to be assembled or, or transformed by you, but by us. So, see, when we know God, and we know we've been chosen by God, yet we, we come to a place in our lives where our own heart begins to deceive us, where we begin to believe that Satan has grown an upper hand. Satan has power. Satan is to be feared. Satan could be and represent the government or a government system or, or the strength of another man's hand, a human being trying to find comfort, strength from another human being. And yet while rejecting God and in that, seeking strength from others, men and people, say, say like the government, like insurance companies. Seeking our faith and our comfort in some other hand outside of the hand of God. You know, that's the thing. Is, is Christians and the establishment of God's kingdom. This is where what, what's the transformation. Right now we have many different denominations. 
right? We got the Baptists, we, we got the Catholics, we got the Presbyterians, we got the Methodists, we got the Lutherans, we, we got a, a church for everybody and, and a place for everybody. And if you don't like this way or what we're teaching, come to this place. And if you don't like what we're teaching, go to this place or whatever. And we got many churches, you know, uh, the Assembly of God, the, 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 the uh, Episcopalians, the, the, you know, all these different things. Yet, in the end, each one of them ha has chosen, basically, to remove Christ as the head or the king. And you say, not so. We, we all believe in Jesus Christ, but we believe in him in a different form, in a different way. But but in the end, what you're really saying is, no, the Baptists, in, in the hierarchy that, that's set in place by Baptist people, that that's the king and leader. Same for Presbyterians and the Catholics. And th those are the leaders, and they have many different leaders and many different heads. And in that, we are divided. We're divided. Not, not, a, not a nation gathered together in strength as nations and countries and kingdoms are. But we're a nation divided. A nation scattered throughout the world, throughout Babylon. Right? Everybody using their own gifts to do their own work for God. But together, we, we are, are not strong. And why do I say we are not strong? Because in our weakness, we find our strength in God. And God is the living word. And we're not strong because we are divided. And a kingdom divided has no strength. See, see, it's, it's the United States of America and, and all the unbelievers or, or atheists or, or whatever they are, citizens of, of the United States, right? They, they all come together and they agree that if we pay in to the insurance company, we, we will receive our, our reward and we will receive our reward in full. And, and our reward, reward is care. Somebody will be there to care for us. So, so basically, the insurance company is fighting and warring against God because how is it that the Christian nation, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, this Christian nation, can't come up with a plan for care? And because we're, we, we reject God and his teachings and instructions, love thy neighbor as yourself, love as I have loved you, you uh, feed the least and you fed the greatest. Care for the least and you cared for the greatest. And, and this is a uh, physical care. And in the Christian nation, there, there's no insurance plan. There, there's one plan, the Jesus Christ plan, Pick up your cross and then follow me. And we see in Jesus Christ and the health care he provides that there is none outside of God's refuge. Even if the whole world turns against you, faith in God will prevail. You know? And it says, you know, that's the thing is, by his wounds, we are healed. It's not that he came to be wounded for your healing. It is because of the recognition that, that, that our actions create the wound. Creates the wound. Our unbelief in, in God's word creates the wounds, the beatings, the suffering. And the abuse. Chapter 17 of Jeremiah says that, that God will, will force you to serve your enemies. And Jesus says, do not resist evil. Do not resist your enemies. In the same way as all the world turned against him and became his enemies. And because they were his enemies, they were willing to inflict the wound. Thus you serve your enemies. 
And in what way will we serve our enemies? If your brother sins against you, your enemy is, is he who sins against you, he who persecutes you, he who abuses you, he who uses you for the gain of, of their person. Right? By leaving you broke and dead and left without nothing. And, and that's the thing. Why, why is it we, the, the people of Jesus Christ, will be serving our enemies as God is the servant. He serves both the just and the unjust. He serves us daily. And he, and he serves us by providing us with free will. Free will. God explains to through all the thing that, that hey one of the gifts of, of being likened unto God made in his image is free will because God himself is full of free will. God is free will. And together, if, if, if this free will and God will not break your free will and will not take your free will from you because love cannot exist unless free will is a reality. Reality. And the people were free willingly choosing to, to disobey God, to not trust in God. And we see it today that we don't want to trust in God. We don't give tithes. And one of the reasons people don't tithe to the church anymore is because men, meat of flesh, have proven to be untrustworthy. I mean, look, we have buildings all across America on each and every corner. Trillions of dollars. The Catholics alone spend a billion dollars on one building. And they've got millions of buildings. And that's one church. And, and the Presbyterians got churches on every corner. And, and the Baptists got churches everywhere on every corner. And the Methodists and, and the Lutherans. And, and look at the buildings. Look at the money we put into the buildings. Look at the, all that's wasted on parking lots. One parking lot alone for one of those buildings. The parking lot cost you $500,000. The building, a million. Trillions of dollars being spent on these buildings, these temples, these places where, where people can come and gather to create fellowship and relationships for one hour a week. Not every day. I just wonder if if, if, like now, at the new age and uh, the end of the age, instead of wishing and wanting and desiring to build another church, another building, another place, to spend another trillion to two trillion on maintaining these buildings, seeing to it that these buildings, you know, always have electricity, heat in the winter, and, and air conditioning in the summer. Making sure the grass is mowed and look at the money, trillions spent in these buildings. In these places. Yet, yet, each and every one, by their actions, their deeds, to deny you. Did, did you not know? Did I not know? Did, did we not know that, that we, that you, are the holy temple? within your temple, God's spirit dwells. And all the people running around as blind people in a, in a world that's forever changing, and not just changing and transforming, but today at a rapid speed, at a rapid pace, it's so fast that, that it's getting confusing. Even in the internet, in the internet world, we can see and watch all the world and, and everything that's happening in the world at real time speed, live, live. And, and in that, many people don't want to change. I, I like my old ways. I like doing it this way or that way. Don't want to change. And the people in Jeremiah's time, same thing. We don't want to change. We don't want to be taken off to this other country. 
We don't know we're going to be slaves to them. Servants to, to our enemies. How will we serve our enemies? By forgiving that brother seven times. Seventy times. A day, if need be. He who sins against you is your enemy. Sinning, forgiving them. You know, Jesus Christ preached. We preach Christ crucified. Jesus Christ taking me on the cross. Father, forgive them for what they are doing. For they do not know. They have no knowledge. They have no wisdom. They do not know. They are those sitting in darkness. What were they doing? Saving you. Saving you. But by, by his wounds, you were healed. By, by his wounds, we are healed. The recognition or the willingness to acknowledge my own actions create the suffering of this world. My unwillingness to be part of a community of believers. And not just to be a part of a community of believers, just to be a part of the care of a community of believers. Care. Peter, in 1 Peter, begins to say, we, we have been deemed holy. Not, not by our works or, or because we've done anything, but just because it was God's great pleasure to deem us holy. And because he deemed us holy, he's also called us to be holy. And holiness is all driven and wrapped around righteousness, which righteousness is, is faith. Our righteousness is credited to us because we believe. Because we believe that, that that care and loving another person through the sincerity or the depths of their heart is greater than the seeking of revenge. Forgiveness. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yet, yet here we are as a, the kingdom of Jesus Christ in, in an age, in a day, when technology, airplanes, war, and, and everything that a human being could ever imagine is available to us at our fingertips. But we have refrigeration. We, we, we have hot water to, shade, to shower and to bathe in. Some of the greatest gifts of, of the world has ever seen. We are a part of it, and we are the recipients of it. We are. We are. You are the child who's going to see Jesus Christ. We will all see him. We are the people and within the Bible whom it speaks many times over and over. You will, you will see Jesus Christ. And he will come on the clouds. Many witnesses. All the hosts of the heaven. And all this of things. Did we believe it? Many of us all of a sudden, 2011, 2012, 2013, began to receive dreams, visions. Peter says, your, your young men, your young daughters will see dreams and visions. But hold fast, just know that the end of the world will be consumed in fire. And I'm not sure it's a, a fire as we know it. It's like burning bush or burning trees or, or houses burning down. And, and no, it is the all-consuming fire of God's Spirit. As God said and promised, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. In the same way God spoke death. If you eat from that tree of knowledge, surely you will die. And if I said you will die, if you disobey me, you will die. Yet, I tell you the truth. 
It is the Holy Spirit, which you now hear and see, which is screaming out to you today to stand up and live. And live for God. Live for the righteousness that comes through faith. Faith. When is Jesus Christ to be revealed? When, when is the day going to come when, when Christ is revealed to the entire world? When the lame man, when the crippled man takes to heart and believing that, that Christ in him is alive. And, and that lame man stands up boldly, without fear, on his two feet. Ready to walk and follow Jesus Christ. When he's able to believe that Christ in him can do all things. Right. Peter says to the lame man, Right. I give you faith in Jesus Christ. Stand up and walk. And because he believed it, he did. I give you faith in the teachings and instructions of Jesus Christ. If you love one another as you loved yourself, if you cared for one another with for one another as though you were caring for yourself, God would reward you with health care. And it's not just health care, but we're all going to die, we're all going to perish, we're all going to become sick and become to a place where we cannot help ourselves. Jesus Christ, I, I, he was in a place. He's being led to the crucifixion. I, I'm being led to a place where I cannot help myself. But faith in God delivered him from the grave. We're all heading there. Wouldn't it be nice to, to know that, that we had not just a, a viable kingdom, we had a king in charge and a country that manifested itself in, in a world, in, in a place of confusion. And we drove that place of confusion to, to look and see that, hey, there's something going on in the world today. And what is going on in the world today, I want to be a part of it because of what they're doing. It's so great. It's so awesome. It's so amazing. It brings wonder to my mind. Is Christ here? Is God amongst us? Does he live with us? Does he walk with us? Can God be seen? And God can be seen. When we obey Him, when we manifest the teachings and instructions of God and turn it from a place of stone into a heart of flesh, He says, I will give you a new heart. A new heart. A heart likened to David, a, a king who. who truly loved God with all his heart, mind, and soul. And it was God's desire that the king loved his people in the same way God did. For that reason, David would not kill Saul. Enemy. I will serve my enemy by allowing them to live. Jesus says, I want you to do the same. I forgave all your sins, and when you walk around boldly knowing that you are free from sin, you are able to walk and freely live your life without creating another wound in Christ's body. You will be free. Let us not be those who, who administer the wounds but those who are willing to heal the wounds, to heal one another, to engage with the lowly, 
to sit with the eyesore of, of this world. Loving your, your enemies is a command. So I wanted to remind you that, that if we're out in the state of Babylon, place of confusion, seeking to, to blame other people for, for the problems we have, just remember that, that God will hold each one of us accountable for our own deeds and will repay each one of us for our own deeds. The reason I don't got health care is because I don't really care about those others. For all one body in Christ, one member in one body, how is it we reject ourselves? If we're going to love this body, if we're going to love the body of Christ, we must love the whole body. That includes myself. The reason I don't have health care is because I, myself, ain't worthy of it. comes back to us. By our own deeds, we will be repaid. Jesus comes and he's bringing his reward with him. Right? And the reward is he who loves Jesus will never see death. And this is the man, this is the woman, this is the human being who, who loves Jesus. The one who obeys him. The one who's willing to love his neighbor is himself. The, the one who's willing to care for the health of his own body is he who loves Jesus. The one who lives his life just like Jesus did. Pick up your cross and follow me. You know, here we are at the end of the 70 years of the restoration of the first 70 years of the restoration of Israel. Right? And there's a great movement all of a sudden. Great movement all across the United States of America, and I don't know where, but, but many people are saying, hey, go back to Israel. You got to go back and, and visit Israel. You got to go to the Holy Land and see that place. As they are trying to fulfill these words as at the end of the 70 years, I will call you back. And I'll call you back to this place where I exiled you from. Many people want to go there. Right? Maybe, maybe God is calling us to be holy. We abandoned holiness. We abandoned righteousness. We, we, we abandoned justice. And we began to become assimilated into the world. We, we, we're going to be just like those guys. And as a church, as a kingdom, we say to our own people, if you truly want to care, go to those guys. Rejecting the body of Christ. Come back to God. And he will return to you. If you seek God with all your heart and all your mind, you will find him. If you come knocking on the door of God, it will be open to you. Do you believe him? You know, the, the world's problems sometimes stem from, from ourselves and our unwillingness to, to admit my own actions create my own problems. Faith without deeds is dead. Dead. Faith without deeds dead. You must believe. You must believe. Courage 
and pray for your courage and faith and your strength that you will be able to, to trust in, in God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Seek Him and you will find Him. Understand. It is the will of God that all men be saved. It is the will of God that all men be loved and cared for. It. You know, I don't need to go back to Jerusalem. Been there. Been there. I was crucified with Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Not going back to that city where they killed destroy prophets and apostles. There's no reason to return. We worship God in spirit and in truth. Right? Let us return to the truth. Hmm? I was justified hanging on that cross next to Jesus Christ. Justified by hanging there. My resurrection, my faith, my love, my hope is all stored in one place, in one simple prayer. Jesus Christ, when you enter your kingdom, remember me. Remember me. See you next time.